This is gonna take two trips. Welcome to Sunday vlog number two. It's gonna be a good day. What do you guys eat for breakfast before you sing on Sunday mornings? I'm horrible and I don't really, <laughs> I don't really try to do a good job. Like this is pop and you know, I might eat a chocolate muffin for breakfast. <laughs> so I should probably be having some herbal tea this morning instead. But um, anyways, getting ready for first service. We have our traditional service coming up and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good day. just past rehearsal and we already have one issue that has been plaguing me. Can you hear this? Our front fill have been causing issues. We've got something wrong with one of our amps and so uh, I'm gonna try and fix that if I can. So our front fill amp went out that is only a couple years old so we were using one of our old amps, and I don't know if it's the wiring maybe that's uh, causing the static in that speaker, but uh, it could be, we may just have to live with it today. Two minutes. Let's do this. First service. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my true at last I lay down And I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Alright, we just finished first service and <laughs> there's an old man in my office. <laughs> hey, uh, you're using drums, right? And I don't know. I don't really appreciate that very much. <laughs> the African drums. <laughs> and then the other end of the spectrum, <laughs> our student pastor, Noah. Yes. All right. All right. So the question I have today is... All right. This is serious, Kevin. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right Kevin. Yes. How do we define a successful worship service? Yes. Um, first of all, you must have an organ <laughs> and a piano. And all the songs must be in the 1955 Broadman. And they cannot be diddlies, little choruses sung over and over in repetition. Amen. Must be deep, deep, meaningful, mm. meaningful mm. lyrics that no one can understand. Mm. You know, raise your Ebenezer. Has to be in there at least, well, no more than one because you don't want repetition. And everyone must not participate with their <laughs> arms folded. This sounds staring, successful, yeah. Yes, it is. And staring like this at the worship leader. <laughs> there was actually some new new ladies in there this morning, and it was my goal. Yes. They were staring at me, like, just with their arms folded, like and they looked very angry. And it was my goal to make them smile. And one of them finally did. She was smiling oh, no, by the end you, of worship. You were unsuccessful. Oh. You were very unsuccessful. That was a terrible worship service. God, Ryland, <laughs> damn it. All right, I'm here with our electric guitarist, Roger DeCoster. Hello. And I'm gonna have him kind of go through what he uses. Roger is a volunteer and plays almost every week for us. And you use the Helix. The That's Helix. Right. LT. Yeah. LT. And why are you, why'd you choose the LT? Really it's because uh, it's simple to use. And uh, instead of using a bunch of uh, different pedals where I have to make adjustments every week. Uh, I can do what's called a, 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 a preset and I can st I can stage uh, the entire song or a set of songs on several different presets. So it's a lot easier to uh, to, to change through things and and uh, for example, we, you know, today we're doing uh, we're doing four different songs and so I have all four presets already arranged so 
all the tones and everything are already set for each of those presets. So if we're doing great things, I click on that to start off with. And then you'll notice I'm in a snapshot mode, snapshot mode which allows me to, to um, make altercations to each part of the song. So I have an intro and riff tone, I have a chorus and rhythm tone, verse two and turn. And uh, you can always use this as stomp box mode too. You have different pedals that are built into each of these um, snapshots. But uh, I, for the most part, I do use uh, snapshots. This makes things a lot easier. I don't build my own tones. I don't have that kind of time. So I, I get them through worship tutorials and uh, through uh, a guy named Alex Trapala. I think I said his last name right. But uh, uh, great, great two people there. They, they uh, offer Helix past, uh, patches to where you can just plug either straight songs in, like this one's from Worship Tutorials that we're playing today on Great Things, or Alex Trabala just has a few uh, overall tones, and, and I adjust those. If I'm doing a new song, I'll set up, using his bass, I'll set up the songs using some of the tones and stuff he's already pulled out. Okay, so like just walk through on Great Things, just a little bit of each of the patches. So like if you're on the intro, show us what that would sound like if you were playing it. Just actually play it? Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, so the intro, if I'm actually playing it. So that would be the intro part. So the verse, um, when I go to verse two, it's a little bit of a cleaner tone. And then on my pickup, I'll actually switch to uh, my neck pickup to give it a little cleaner tone. So I'll switch up to my neck pickup. So, and I'm just doing. Okay. And then if I'm Palm muty. Yeah, palm muty. And if I, you know, if I'm going into that turn where it's a little bit more uh, overdrive, I'll s switch my uh, pickup there back down to the bridge and then. Okay. Awesome, man. Okay, so if people have a Helix, you say Worship Tutorials has good stuff. Yes. Alex's website. And then how do you learn your parts? Because Roger was an acoustic player like me that's yes. kind of transitioned into electric guitar, and he's done an amazing job. But, like, what has helped you the most? Yeah, thank you. So uh, Worship Artistry is awesome because they offer uh, tone breakdowns for every song, and then also they do tabs, which has been a lifesaver for me. Again, uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm technically a rhythm guitarist, but uh, transitioning has taken me some time to learn these different parts. I'm not good enough to be able to pick up a song and, and, and learn it within a, a few minutes. It takes me some time. So having a, 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 some tabs and someone walking me through the process really helps. All right, so Roger does an awesome job. And like I said, he's not a paid hired hand. Like he's, he's volunteering every week. And how much, how much time do you spend every Sunday on average, you think, preparing? Um, if it's a if it's a worship set that we're that we've done quite a bit or the songs that we've done quite a bit, it'll take me uh, an hour and a half of practice during the week. If there's a new song, it usually adds another two or three hours to my time uh, to to go to learn the to learn a song, get the tones right, or find the tones. It's it's helpful if I have a, a like worship tutorials if they actually have the song. Yeah. Then that speeds the process up. If I have to build the tones, then that takes a little bit longer, obviously. Yeah. Okay. You guys give uh, Roger an attaboy for his awesome tone and playing today. We'll play some of the clips from the service right now. Thank you. Five, four, three, two, one. They're live. Good morning, Central. We are so excited to have you here today. Kevin and I have been laughing, and he's had two cups of coffee, so we'll see how this goes. Hi, but, but, Kevin, do you know what, it, what is happening today that's super exciting?
everybody. All right. This is my wife. Isn't she awesome? She uh, was leading that last song that you probably heard a little snippet of. And I'm so thankful when she leads with us. So I'm going to make her answer some of the questions about what we talked about earlier of like, how do we determine if, a, how do we judge our services and, and what is a win and what, you know, what works and what doesn't, you know, when we're evaluating a worship service. And we, so. and we remind me of those, you said you have three, like three benchmarks that, that kind of determine success yeah. for our worship team. Authenticity, excellence, biblical worship. Okay. So that's kind of our purpose statement as a worship ministry. But we also have these questions that we come up with a, as our pastor and me have talked just to actually evaluate our services. Cause it's so hard to know, like, you know, there weren't as many people that raised their hands this week as there were last week. So does that mean this week wasn't as good as last week? <laughs> maybe, maybe they did garden work like me and their arms were sore. <laughs> maybe. Okay. So first question we always ask is, did we stick to the schedule? I never pay attention to that, but I think we did. We did. I don't know. The schedule is always stuck to with my part. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I mean, you guys should see there's a minute by minute. Like this is how long this this element should take. And yeah. it's very intentional, very well thought out. Well, the reason that's important to us is not because we have multi-site and all this stuff. Uh, it's really just because we want to honor people's time. Right. And that way we're ending at the time we say we're going to end when mm -hmm. they come. Uh, so, so far we're doing good. We'll see how Pastor Clayton does. He's really actually very short at preaching. It's great. Number two, <laughs> how was the gospel presented? Oh gosh, I think it, I think it came through through the music. It is done. It is finished. Christ has won. I mean, that, that victory. Um, and then the tremble. Oh my goodness. I mean, just the, the knowing that our Lord can make mountains tremble and that there is nothing that can overcome him. I, I absolutely think that we were able to lift up authentic, thoughts for people to meditate on. So yeah, I, I, that. I really wanted to make sure that we sang songs that were like very gospel centric this week because Clayton's preaching his last sermon about tithing and there's not like a gospel call at the end of it. And so, you know, just making sure that that's always present in our services is one of our goals. Number three, how did we incorporate our vision? Did you hear how I incorporated the vision? Tell me. So between the songs, I talked about how Christ changed history and split it in half and that Jesus changes everything. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, just a little slight thing. So well, I no, no one mentioned it too. I remember him That's mentioning true. it too. Yeah. So number four is a big one. Were there any awkward moments? Uh, there weren't, there wasn't for me. For me, there was one awkward moment where I, oh. I was waiting for them to transition the song and I had told them to start the next track, you know, as we're hanging on this chord and I think they thought I was going to talk some more or something. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't start it. And so we just kind of hung there. It was like literally four beats. But in my mind, I'm like, come on, start the Well, track. and my voice cracked hitting one of the notes at the end, too. So that definitely is always awkward when, um, especially like if you're really feeling it and you are I'm going uh, for into it. it and you're emotional. And, um, and hopefully I pulled the microphone away in time. Right. Yeah. So, and the last question we always ask is like, what tech things, was there anything wrong? Anything, you know, need to be fixed? So, uh, I, I mean, in my opinion, I, hi, Don. <laughs> what was that again? Say that one more time. So the last question we always ask is what tech things need to be fixed or corrected for the next time? Uh, for me, I noticed that our front fills have a static thing that we've battled over the last six months and then came back this morning. So... You know, that's something we'll try and fix next right, week. But right. what about you? Well, again, my my scope is very limited because I have my in-ears set to only hear certain things. Like, I don't put drums in my in-ears at all because I usually am standing close enough to hear them. And there's a click. And yeah, but you were doing so, the opening stream thing and our camera wouldn't work because the adapter was not working. I don't know what happened there, but we, we traded it out and got it fixed. Well, and, and, but I stuff mean, like that always happens. It does, so. but there, you have to expect a certain amount of that. You know, I, I think being present is more important than perfection. So totes. All right. So I want to know from you guys, do you have questions that you ask every week in your staff meetings to evaluate, like actually evaluate objectively? Because I struggle with that because for us, and we're wrapping this up for us, I don't want to evaluate just based on emotion or how many hands were raised. But at the same time, our church culture is not one that's been historically hand raising outward expression of worship. So when I right. see that, that does like mean something for our church, I think. Absolutely. It means people are connecting somehow that they don't usually. So Well, and your and your body reflecting the posture of your heart. And yeah. so and, and obviously like you and I can discuss that things. I wonder who your viewers who who do they go to for kind of an outsider's view. Right. Yeah. Because my wife is 
honest with me usually. I feel like she is the prey sandwich, but uh, no, I I mean, yeah. Who who do you go to to evaluate your service objectively? And um, let it's me know that because I'm still trying to figure out like the best way to do that. And so if you have some tried and true method, comment down below and you know. I don't know, like these Sunday vlogs that we're doing that I'm putting together. I hope they're kind of like just a realer look of uh, what we're doing and maybe it can help somebody out there. You mean we're not perfect? uh, We're close (laughs) to halfway perfect. No, we're not perfect. I think you're perfect. All right. Love you. All right. See you in the next one.